Restevius is the host to five North American servers. Those who have the most hours on their servers win $10 weekly. They have extremely active staff and a rapidly growing Discord server with just under a thousand members in only two months. And they just dropped a new vanilla server, so make sure to go check them out in the description. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video is going to be a quick update on the mixing table, my thoughts on the teas, and how you can farm berries. The mixing tables are deployable, which is larger than a tier 3, however it still fits in a square foundation or two triangle foundations. You can find it in chests, however it's probably better to just go to bandit camp and buy it for 175 scrap. You can then research it and then simply craft it for only 200 metal frags and 100 stone. Inside of the mixing table you'll see all of the recipes, which mainly includes turning berries into tea and then purifying that tea so that it's stronger. The other recipes include low grade gunpowder and if you know the blueprint explosives, the reason that it's better to craft it here is because you can put in all the ingredients, start mixing, and then you can go elsewhere in the base and start crafting other things as well. The only downside is that if you craft GP here, it costs an extra 10 charcoal per 10 GP. Each tea has a different type of recipe, however you need 4 berries to make the basic tea and then you need 4 of each tea in order to make the next tier. Therefore the final tea which is pure requires 64 berries. Remember that the recipes can all be found on Rust Lab including the stats on each individual tea. Now with that being said, I'm going to go over my thoughts on each one of them. Starting off with the worst is the rad tea. I think it's bugged and doesn't work quite as well as intended and here's a clip of me trying to land on launch site while not having sufficient rads but using a rad tea. Here I'm using the pure rad tea which should get my rads up to more than 50, however it doesn't do anything and I've tried testing this in other areas but it still doesn't do much. Even if this tea did work I still wouldn't say it's that viable as the only time it's useful would be on launch site as it can save you 100 cloth when you're trying to loot the top elite crates. But other than that it's not really ever going to be that viable. The wood ore and scrap teas are all pretty much the same, they all last for 30 minutes and here's the buff that they give. As you can see, as you go up in the chain, you get an extra percentage per farming, but it's not really worth it because you need to use four of the previous tea in order to recreate the second one. So the only time it would be worth upgrading is if you have heaps of teas and you find that you're not going on that many farm runs. In order for the later teas to be more viable, they need to buff berry farming, but I'll get into that later. The wooden ore is pretty standard, the more percentage you have, the more you get per tree or node, and the scrap only works for barrels, it doesn't work for recycling crates or other things like that. The final teas are the health ones. The max health one lasts for 5 minutes and the healing over time works similar to a large med kit. The max health is 5, 12.5 and 20 and because it only lasts for 5 minutes I only recommend using this one when you're raiding or getting raided. And in this rare case I wouldn't actually advise against going for the plus 20 because it can make quite a significant difference when you're in a raid. Especially if you pair this with a heavy armor and a shotgun, having an extra 20 HP is insane. The healing ones are quite nice, although do keep in mind unlike the large med kit they don't stop bleeding, so you'll want to pair these with bandages as they take a while and if you're bleeding or you have radiation then you're going to have a tough time healing. And I never recommend upgrading these as you can stack them up to 10 times and put them in your hotbar and just click them whenever you need them. There's no point in upgrading because you can just have two of the lower tees rather than having one of the better one. Now that I've given you my thoughts on the tees, it's time to tell you how to get them. You can get a couple of them from some crates, however if you want to get lots of them, you're probably better off berry farming. Berry farming works similar to hemp farming except there's one big problem. You can't clone berries until they're in fruiting stage. This means that you need to wait at least an hour and 40 minutes before you can even clone one plant. This pretty much makes crossbreeding impossible and even if you find a good clone and then clone it, by the time you actually fill up a decent sized base the wipe is going to be over. So the best way to go about berry farming is a bit of a new tactic. Even by some miracle if you finally do get a decent clone you'll have to clone it every hour and 40 minutes and after about 9 hours of farming you'll be able to fill the entirety of your 162 planner boxes. And keeping in mind that there's more than one type of berry so you're going to need to get lucky around 5 times, which is extremely unlikely. If Phage Punch ever decide to fix this and make it so that you can clone it during sapling stage then by all means crossbreed like I've showed you in my other videos. But for berry farming it's going to be different to hemp farming. The setup will be exactly the same so if you don't know how to set up a farm go watch some of my other videos where I do it with hemp. However for berry farming what you're going to want to do is run out into the wild and find as many berries as possible. Then you're going to eat all the berries and get as many seeds as possible. Then plant all the seeds without the berries of the same colour touching. The reason we do this is because berries can crossbreed with one another but only if they're the same colour. So as long as you plant the berry seeds so that they're not touching their own colour, they won't crossbreed and they won't plant slower. 
because green berries are only used in rad teas and red berries are used in most of the teas, this is the setup that I like to go for. Notice how none of the colors are touching and of course you can swap the colors if you want. The middle one's actually a white berry in case you couldn't tell. So now that you've lined up all your berries, all you have to do is wait for them to hit ripe stage, then you can harvest them, giving you roughly three to four berries. If you eat all three of these berries, you'll get three more seeds, essentially tripling your output, but you can do this at a much faster rate than waiting for a good gene. Then if you triple your output, you can just keep reproducing this until you have heaps of berries. Then once you're comfortable with your production size, you can stop eating all the berries and the excess berries you get, you can just use in your teas. Don't forget that you can find berries in the wild, which you can keep adding to your setup. But once you've got a standard three by six setup, you'll be getting 162 berries times by three every single time you harvest. You wanna eat 162 berries so that you can replant them straight away, which will give you 324 berries roughly every two hours. That's around 81 cups of tea, but do keep in mind the opportunity cost is that you could have planted hemp, which would have gotten you just under 10K cloth or around 1.2K scrap. Depending on its tier, that places the value of a cup of tea at 1560 or 240 scrap. Although do keep in mind that it's a lot easier to farm berries than it is to farm cloth because you don't have to clone and it's just a lot quicker of a process. The only downside is obviously filling up that first initial 162 planter boxes. Although I would argue that it's actually a little bit quicker than crossbreeding because getting around 20 berries in the wild isn't that hard of a task and if you do that you can triple them in 2 hours and then triple 60 to get your full 162 at least. From then on you can go up multiple floors if you want to set up a tea shop but the rest is completely up to you. Overall, I'm a little bit sad that you can't crossbreed berries as that would have been something fun to do as well, or at least allow us to clone them during mature stage. If anything changes with Face Punch allowing us to clone during mature, I'll be sure to let you guys know on my Discord, so make sure if you're not already a member of that, you come join. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.